Welcome to Channel of Resolves, where we play a different deck list every video. I'm Country Fried today. Or's off control. Let's take a look. <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to hop into this deck list. It's Orzov Midrange or Orzov Control. Remember, this is not an aggro deck. This is a control deck. So as much as you want to aggro out with your creatures and stuff, you are controlling the battlefield as much as possible or the board state, whatever you want to call it. So that is what this deck list is. We're finally to a point where we can start building some control decks uh, compared to all the aggro that we've been dealing with, especially like mono black and stuff like that. So our removal package is two cut downs, which destroy a target creature with total power and toughness of five or less for one black. It's an instant. We have three fateful absences. It's one colorless, one white. You can destroy target creature or planeswalker. Its controller can investigate. That means it gets a clue token. They can pay two and they can draw a card. However, this is to help us uh, clear up the field of any planeswalkers. Usually a Liliana is what we're looking for, or just quick removal for like the Shieldreds and stuff like that. We have Invoke Despair, which is our go wide more towards the late game. And of course, target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life. You draw a card and then they do the same with an enchantment and a planeswalker as well. And repeat the process for those three creature, planeswalker, enchantment. I'm running March of Wretched Sorrows in here. You can switch this out to an Infernal Grasp, but I like the life gain in this with March of Wretched Sorrows, especially for the fact that it can hit creatures and planeswalkers as well. So we're kind of running six possible planeswalkers removals and then another three, so nine total if you're counting Invoke Despair. But this is also going to help gain us some life if we absolutely need it. And since we're a control deck, we don't really move along into our game plan and our aggro points until later in the game. So March of Wretched Sorrows is what my choice of removal removal was you guys can utilize in, uh, infernal grasp here if you want we have three uh, meat hook massacres in here for our board wipe of course it gives negative x negative x to each creature on the field where x is whatever you cast it for and then whenever a creature you control dies your opponent loses a life and whenever an opponent's creature dies you gain a life for our card draw, we have Reckoner Bank Buster in here, and plus for the fact that we can crew it with a lot of our creatures. So we're utilizing this mainly for the card draw points, but we can also utilize this as aggro. And you'll see in one of the matches where this comes in really handy. Um, there's, they're just trying to burn out our creatures and kill them off, and we just keep crewing the Reckoner Bank Buster with the creatures that they're killing off and blocking up our opponent. So it can become troublesome for the opponent not being able to remove this on the field with like a complete board wipe if they're just using it. Uh, spot removal especially with the creatures that we run all of them can crew the bank buster we have three wedding announcements in here which can drop a 1-1 uh, creature token for us for three turns and then it flips and then gives all of our creatures plus one plus one or if we attack with two or more creatures we can draw a card we also have three Tenacious Underdogs in here. It is a 3-2-2 two, two drop, which can crew our Reckoner Bank Buster. But if it goes to the graveyard and it's not removed, we can cast it for its Blitz, blitz cost, pay two life, put it in, do three damage, sacrifice it at the end of turn, and then, of course, draw a card off of it. The new card from Dominary United that we've got in here is Anointed Peacekeeper. It is two colorless, one white. It is a 3-3 human cleric. It has vigilance. As an anointed peacemaker, or as anointed peacemaker enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand and then choose any card name. Spells your opponent cast with the chosen name cost two or more to cast. Activate abil activated abilities of sources with the chosen name cost two or more uh, to activate unless they're mana abilities. This comes really good in one of our matches, and you'll see it within the gameplay as well. But uh, Anointed Peacekeeper is an absolutely brilliant uh, card that uh, got added. It's not as good as the PVDDR that we lost, but it's still a really good card. Plus, again, it can crew our Reckoner Bank Buster if we want. Graveyard Trespasser, which is arguably the best three-drop creature within Mono Black. It is a 3 3. It comes in. It's got a ward cost of discard a card on both sides. It can become a 4 4 if it's night as the graveyard glutton. And then whenever it enters the battlefield, um, you can exile up to one target card from a graveyard. If it's a creature card that's exiled this way, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. You can do this against your own creatures as well since we don't really plan on bringing them back too often. However, you definitely want to try and get uh, tenacious underdogs out of your opponent's graveyards if that's what they're playing so that's why graveyard trespass is really good on the glutton side you get to do that twice so 
there's that. We've got one Shieldred Apocalypse in here. It's four or five death touch. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Whenever your opponent draws a card, you lo they lose two life. And then we've got two Edgar's Charm Groom in here. It's four four. Other vampires you control get plus one plus one. And then when it dies, you return it to the battlefield transformed. It's Air Co it's Edgar's Coffin. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one white black vampire creature token with lifelink and put a blood counter on Edgar's uh, coffin, Markov's coffin. And then if there are three or more bloodline counters on it, remove those counters and transform it back into Edgar the 4-4. Four, four. I really like Edgar just because he's an absolute pain in the ass to remove. So I definitely wanted him in this package as well. He helps us kind of just stabilize the board after, you know, like turn five or six and we've been controlling the board state throughout the entire time anyways uh, our planeswalkers of choice are three liliana the bells because we're having players discard cards we've got players sacrificing creatures and we never use our ultimate but liliana the bells a real cheap removal spell or to help us stabilize by uh, making our opponent discard their hand to a degree that they discard a card we've got to discard a card however more often than not it's hurting our opponent that more than it is us and then, of course, we've got Wandering in Emperor in here as a one of. You can sneak it in and do the negative two and exile target tapped creature and gain two life. You can do the negative one and create a two two uh, white samurai creature token with vigilance, or you can do the plus one and put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. It gains first strike uh, until the end of turn. And then for our lands, we have one Seed of a Ganjo to do the four damage to a target attacking or blocking creature. We've got our Plains, our Swamps, two Takanuma Abandoned Myers to help us get a creature or a Planeswalker back from the graveyard if we need. We've got three Cave of Koilos, which uh, we can tap for a white or a black, but it deals one damage to us, but it's just to help us stabilize our mana. And then we've got four Shattered Sanctums. And then I'm running four Rafine's Towers in here just to kind of help us get the uh, black and white mana sources down on the ground. But if we get these late game, then we're definitely ut utilizing them on their cycle ability where we can cycle for three and draw a card. So there you guys go, man. It looks like an aggro package. It kind of feels like an aggro package, but you got to run it like a control package. So set back, be patient, and be the assassin you are with Orzov mid-range control. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. With that, I'll see you guys at the outro. Maybe make some suggestions and stuff, some things that I thought about putting in here that I didn't. But uh, we'll definitely cover it in the outro. I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. I'll see you guys then. And until then, stay safe, be happy, and healthy. Peace. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Uh, we go first. I don't love it, but at least we got the land going, so we'll keep. If they're mono black and they drop a sleeper, we can kill it with March of Wretched Sorrows right off the bat. We're just waiting on them. Still just waiting on them. Awesome. All right, so now we just gotta see if they're Celestia Chance or if they're like humans or what, Chance. Okay. prefer an untap land this next turn so we can possibly ambush with Emperor. Or we can just take out with me hook. If we get another untapped land, then we can invoke but we can also leave Emperor open as well. Sure, it's kind of weak. I like where we're at. I do like where we're at. Um, well, with that being the only thing on the field, we're gonna go ahead and go with Shieldred. See if they've got their Touch the Spirit Realm or Borrowed Time.
they can protect it if we invoke despair so depending what they do play or what they do have yeah so what we'll do is probably wait and ambush with emperor and that way if that's the only creature that they've got yeah so if we ambush with emperor man they could still protect now that's more enchantments okay so we can take away the card draw um yeah let's go with this i know we could exile but i'm not too worried about the creature anymore so much we can do the invoke despair here i have got new moves to teach you i'm guessing they're doing restoration unless they want a creature okay ggs Mate, they just don't want to do anything. That's fine. GG's. This month's Patreon rewards features some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, we go first, man. I don't dig it. But I don't hate it. Let's see where it goes. Hopefully we draw some lands. If not, this is gonna be horrible. Fucking anvils. Anvils, man. Just red. Just red's fine. They gotta be doing the burn thing, right? Well, at least we got ways to get the bird out of the graveyard. All right, let's see what they're playing with. their lightning strikes cost everything see if they overcommit to the board with that happening if they do we need to hook the board for two take out everything sure yeah. So they're gonna like strike my guy so they can attack in. Did you not see that one, Chief? I mean, I'm fine with it, but you better just come in with that bird.
Is that how we want to do this? Hmm. Let's go like this. Here. See if they lightning strike again. Oh yeah, it's going to resolve. See what they give up. I mean, if we have to use March of Virtue Sorrows, we've got it. That's what we really wanted right there. So we can get Squee out of there and we can get that damn bird. All right. Let them do what they want to do. Squee coming down anyways. I mean, it's 2-2 with haste. I'm fine with it. How many cards do they got to exile? Four. Nice. Okay. Sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's gonna come down to burn, man. That sucks. Um. We'll see if they figure it out. <laughs> we'll see. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did that, bro. Sure. But he still taxes it. <laughs> he still taxes it. Oh wow, they're just, they're angry. Oh wow, mono red tilt, <laughs> that's fine. I've been there a lot, <laughs> all right, GG's. <laughs> all right, we go first, um, yeah, we'll keep it. Waiting on the opponent. <laughs> Itchy nose. Got some Boros. Got more than Boros. Just Boros? Hmm. When I win, you're telling me what you won't be outsmarting me. Yeah? Nice. Oh, so we're doing Mardu Angels. Okay. I know where we're at now. So do we take Underdog off the field? Out of the graveyard, I guess to say. I think so. Sure, they're getting rid of the goblin. Okay. Sure. I think we're gonna go here. Here. <laughs> I think that's going to be a wrap, bro. I think that's going to be a wrap, bro. It's probably going to be a wrap. <laughs> Off you All right. Go. There you go. All right. GG's. All right, guys. There was gameplay. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, look. I like the package kind of where it's at. And I've been tinkering back and forth with it. However, the sideboard, as you see, has 17 cards. Here's just some ideas that you could go into if you wanted to switch up the package. Um, some ideas that I was thinking about while I was going through, but didn't come to fruition just because I kind of like the package where it was at. Now, the one thing that I might change up in here going forward if I was to keep playing this would be I would probably maybe drop 
Liliana down by one and put Emperor up to two. I really like having the possibility of Emperor coming in and exiling a creature, especially if it's like a tenacious underdog or a shieldred or something like that, and just getting rid of them in general. Um, you could also think about taking out Peacekeeper altogether if you wanted, and then putting in four Graveyard Trespassers, four Tenacious Underdogs, and then maybe a fourth wedding announcement. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't change it up too much. Uh, the sideboard, though, were some ideas that I was having with this, which you may want to run down and kind of look through your Yourself, see if it's something that you're more comfortable with playing with or if you like the idea or if just something sp sparks your uh, interest at all when you're thinking about playing this. So I thought about Phyrexian Missionary in here being an Orzhov Colors and it's a 2-3. It comes in at 2 or you can do the kicker cost and then when it comes in, if it was kicked, you can return a target creature card from your graveyard to hand. Uh, I like this possibility, especially since we're running more creatures in this package than the normal control package. Uh, the other one was Spirited Companion, just for the card draw off of that. That's the one thing that I'm kind of seeing that we're slow on with this. Uh, although we do have Invoke Despairs and Bank Busters and Wedding Announcements as possibility of card draws, uh, it still seemed like it was kind of going slow with it. We also run the Rafine's Tower, too. And you could also take out the Rafine's Tower and kind of stabilize the mana if you wanted to away from the untapped lands, but I really like that option in there. Uh, another one was Sunset Revelry. Not too many people use it anymore, but if an opponent has more life than you, you gain four life. If they control more creatures than you, you could put two 1-1 one, one white humans on the uh, board. And if an opponent uh, has more cards in hand than you, you get to draw a card. Uh, I like Sunset Revelry a lot. I just don't know what I would take out to put it back in. Uh, extraction Specialist is another option that you could do. However, we don't really have a two drop that we want to return to the field like Tenacious Underdog. However, if you decide to return to the uh, Spirited Companion or the Phyrexian Missionary type uh, package, then uh, Extraction Specialist may be something you want to do. Now, one thing I really kind of fought over was putting Welcoming Vampire in here somehow. But if I was to put Welcoming Vampire in, I would definitely put Wedding Announcement up to four. Because usually when you get Welcoming Vampire in, you can get a wedding announcement on the ground or you've got one on the ground and you put wel Welcoming Vampire in. And that could draw you cards just off of the creatures coming into play with power two or less. Uh, Sarah Paragon was another one that I thought about. Uh, I just don't know what we would take out to put it in. Maybe the Eggers. Maybe this is more powerful. I don't know. I just find the Eggers an absolute pain in the ass to get rid of when it's on the field. And uh, Sarah Paragon is just kind of open to removal. Uh, Egger has the recursion by flipping to the coffin, creating more bodies, and then just coming back out. Unless they have an exile effect in like... March of Otherworldly Light, which is another removal spell that I thought about taking in here just to kind of exile stuff instead of just killing it off. Some other cards that I thought about was Concealing Curtains for a one drop. I really like this one drop uh, for me personally. I really enjoy Concealing Curtains, especially just for the hands disruption to an opponent. But if you want the early disruption without the creature and having to sink man into it, there's Duress which is a possibility. Uh, Evolve Sleeper, if you feel like you need a one-drop creature and just having some mana sync, uh, is still a really great one-drop, possibly the best one-drop in the game right now next to Concealing Curtains. I actually value Concealing Curtains more, but I see a lot of other people can uh, value an Evolve Sleeper more. Um, Infernal, Infernal Grasp, you can put back in here as the removal, but you'd have to take out probably March of Wretched Sorrows or the Cutdowns. Uh, but again, it's up to you if you wanted to do that. Uh, Tainted Adversary is a good two drop if you wanted to put in here. It has Death Touch. People don't like attacking into it. Plus, it's a late game mana sink. And Fell Stinger is another possibility, but we've got a lot. We've got our three drops kind of covered in Peacekeeper and uh, Trespasser. So I would probably skip Fell Stinger altogether. And Heroes Downfall is another uh, point of removal, but I would still stick with Faithful Absence over Heroes Downfall because if they're spending their mana on their clue to draw a card, then they're not messing with you too much. So let me kind of click these out of here so we can move up. Um, we also have Path of Peril as a possibility for a board wipe. Since we are running Orzov, it's really great board wipe for us. However, it can hit our creatures as well. For the most part, um, if you do it for its three cost, um, we have the Tenacious Underdog and a lot of our tokens going on. Um, and then, of course, if you hit it for its six drop, it hits every creature anyways. However, it's a possibility. 
Uh, soul transfer is another spot removal that we could utilize. Plus, it could help us return creatures or our planeswalkers back from the battlefield. And then there's Soren of the Mirthless, which can create a 2-3 lifelinker for us with flying, or it can start looking off the top of the deck and start helping us draw as well. So there's possibilities, guys. There's a ton of possibilities and alternate uh, avenues to take with this deck list. And there are some ideas that I'm giving you right now. Uh, I did delete some of them out, but you can rewind it and put them back in and see what the list was completely before i just kind of clicked them off but there you guys go deck list is now yours orzov mid-range orzov control remember it feels like an aggro deck it can run like an aggro deck but you really want to keep in mind that you're wanting to run it like control and as long as you do that then you build up your momentum to the aggro side of it Shieldred, Invoke Despair, um, Meat Hook Massacre, all those things will take care of your opponent in the long run on their own. Uh, but the more aggro you build up, of course, you can just get in there and uh, just kill off your opponent. But it was a lot of fun to play, guys. I had a blast with it, and it matched up really well with kind of where the meta, what, where the meta is right now. So there's the deck list. It's all yours. You guys have a great one. Happy Monday. Hopefully you guys are doing well, and I hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, be happy and healthy. Peace. Much love, guys. We'll see you later.